The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome friends once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Namaskar. Now, the past week, we've been witnessing what I call the Usain Bolt style of parliamentary politics. What do I mean by Usain Bolt style of parliamentary politics? Well, quite simply, like the great Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt, it also seems to me that our MPs are in a race every morning to shut down parliament or adjourn parliament without transacting any business in the fastest possible time. Sample the following. On Monday, the Lok Sabha adjourned at 11.10 a.m. after guess what? Treasury bench members, members from the ruling party were slogan shouting demanding an apology from Rahul Gandhi for his remarks in the United Kingdom. Now think about it. These are government MPs slogan shouting when you would expect that the primary duty of the treasury benches is to ensure that parliament functions. Parliament lasted that day for 10 minutes. Turn to Tuesday. The parliament didn't even take that long. By 11.03, Lok Sabha was adjourned. This time because it was the opposition MPs who had immediately moved into the well of the house, shouting slogans demanding a debate on the contentious Adani issue. On Wednesday, Lok Sabha was adjourned at 11.02 in two minutes. That's right. Again, government MPs demanding a Rahul Gandhi apology, opposition saying please discuss the Adani question. On Thursday, it once again took just two minutes for the Speaker Lok Sabha Om Birla to adjourn the House. Think about it now, friends. One estimate suggests that each minute of running Parliament is costing the nation 2.5 lakhs per minute. So think about the crores of rupees that have already been wasted over the last week where no business, not even question hour, has been transacted. There will of course be the usual blame game between the opposition and the government. But in my view, one person needs to be put squarely under the scanner at the moment. Om Birla is the Lok Sabha speaker, a BJP MP from Kota and has had a spectacular rise in a way up the political ladder. The Prime Minister, we are told, likes Om Birla's no-nonsense outlook. Now, if you look at Om Birla, you know, he's got a familiar smile on his face or grin, as I call it all the time. But the tragedy is, here is a speaker who seems to have forgotten the cardinal principle of parliamentary politics or of his constitutional post where once you sit on the chair, you are no longer a member of a political party. The Speaker of the Lok Sabha belongs to the House, not to a political party. Truth is, my friends, Mr. Birla has sadly chosen to virtually act like a, another member of the Treasury benches of the BJP faithful. So, for example, on day one, the moment Parliament began, he allowed Union Minister Rajnath Singh to get up and demand an apology from Rahul Gandhi. The moment the Congress wanted to respond or retort, sorry, Mr. Om Birla quickly adjourned the House. On day two, he allowed another government minister, Piyush Goel, who is not even a member of the Lok Sabha, member of the Raj, leader of the uh, BJP in the Rajya Sabha, to once again get up, call for an apology from Rahul Gandhi, didn't allow the opposition to respond. House adjourned again. Instead of getting the House to function, Mr. Birla has been seen almost repeatedly admonishing the opposition, blaming it for not allowing the House to function. But here is the nub. Getting the House to function is the responsibility of Mr. Birla and the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, Mr. Prahlad Joshi. They are the ones who call a business advisory committee meeting and that business advisory committee meeting comprising members from all the parties is supposed to set the agenda for a particular week of the parliament session. 
But the truth is, these meetings have become virtual no-shows, where the government and the opposition, especially the Congress, simply cannot meet eye to eye on any issue. Instead of trying to resolve this conflict, the speaker and dare I say the parliamentary affairs minister just don't seem to have played a proactive role in these meetings to get the two sides to work together. The great speakers of the past had this ability, the ability to cut across the political aisle, to connect with people across party lines, not to treat the opposition as the enemy and thereby get parliament to function. Uh, the effective parliamentary affairs ministers were those who would also be able to build a consensus because they had friends in all parties. The late P.A. Sangma and Somna Chatterjee are good examples of Lok Sabha speakers who were happy to connect with a cross-section of MPs building a personal rapport with many. Yes, Somna Da could be an intimidating presence at times uh, in parliament, but the fact was that Somnath Da was the person who was always ready to allow a fierce debate in parliament. Recall how Somnath Chatterjee stuck in fact to a non-partisan line on the Indo-US nuclear deal, went against the CPIM's stand on it, his own party, which was opposed to the deal. The party asked him to uh, withdraw from the speaker's position. He refused and he was expelled as a result. That's what you call a speaker who's ready to take a stand. P.S. Sangma also could be a charmer. Once he had a run-in with an opposition uh, BJP MP at the time. Soon after the house was adjourned, Mr. Sangma sent for that MP, invited him to his chamber for a cup of chai and told him, you know, I believe you are a teetotaler. Otherwise, I would have invited you home and given you something stiffer. He smiled, the MP smiled, the mood had immediately lightened. Mr. Sangma, of course, was known for his ready smile and that's a useful quality to have when you are the speaker and can reach out to people easily. Among parliamentary affairs ministers, two names that I recall, Pramod Mahajan and Gulam Nabi Azad. Both had a vast network of friends and acquaintances and that served their parties well. Their parliament office was like an open house where you could walk in and uh, sit and have a cup of tea with the minister or his aides. Remember, both Mahajan and Azad were parliamentary affairs ministers during the coalition era of Indian politics. So having a minister who had friends across party lines was useful because numbers always mattered. Mahajan and Kulam Nabi Azad succeeded to a great extent because they were not the kind who alienated fellow MPs. Sadly, that's exactly what's happening now. So deep is the trust deficit in our politics between the government and the opposition, especially the Congress, that we've now reached the point of no return, my friends. Just look at the way Om Birla, for example, talks at times to Mahua Moitra, the fiery Trinamool Congress MP in the Lok Sabha. On more than one occasion, we witnessed a public spat between the two. Mahua insists that the speaker doesn't give her a fair chance to speak. Om Birla says that Mahua is going on Twitter and targeting him. Now, a much easier way would have been for Mr. Birla to invite Mahua Moitra for a cup of tea, maybe some rasgullas, and uh, do what uh, presiding officers, uh, some of his pre predecessors as presiding officers did, break the ice over a cup of chai. The question is, and this is the key, does anyone really want to break the ice any longer? You see, it suits the government to allow the parliament to function in this dysfunctional manner. Why? Because A, they can then pin the blame entirely on the opposition. B, because you can then avoid a debate on the contentious issue of Gautam Adani and C, because then you have no accountability whatsoever because parliament simply doesn't function. Om Birla in that sense, my friends, is only following instructions today. And the instructions are clear. 
under no circumstances in this session of parliament will there be a debate on Gautam Adani. Even remarks on Adani have been expunged from the records when Rahul Gandhi raised it during uh, the debate last month. Remember, Om Birla doesn't have the stature of a Somnath Da who was a, at the end of the day a 10-time MP or a Purnio Sangma who was again a multi, multiple times MP and had been Chief Minister of Meghalaya. Mr. Birla is a two-time MP who has been given this post not because he is a mass politician of any consequence but because he is simply someone who will do exactly what he is told by the political executive. He is someone therefore who will simply not rock the boat for the BJP leadership. An ideal speaker is someone who will command the respect of all, bring people together, harmonize, look to ensure that parliament functions smoothly, encourage debate, not disorder. Sadly, that's not happening at the moment, which is why parliament is in what I call breakdown mode. And you and I, as taxpayers, are watching this sorry tamasha play out session after session. As a postscript, let me tell you that at the moment it's not just the opposition MPs who are aggrieved by what's happening inside parliament. You see, Central Hall of Parliament was traditionally a place where journalists would meet netas in an informal setting. It was a tradition that goes back to the 1950s. Now even that practice has been stopped. It was stopped initially during COVID because of social distancing rules. Now. The practice has not been restored. Representations by many of us, including editors, guild, other organizations, have been met by cold silence from the Speaker's office. The aim is clear. Deny media access to the citadel of Indian democracy. Is this really how we aim to enhance our ranking in the democratic world? That's a question I leave you with. Think about it. That was the straight bat. Do of course uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.